In this video, I will show you how to work with uh, finding the magnitude of the net electric field and the direction of the net electric field when you have more than one dipole. So let's say that we have one dipole here and it has the two charges. So this will be the plus Q, this will be the minus Q. Let's make Q to be 1.6, 10 to minus 19 coulombs. And I will place one more dipole, let's say somewhere here. Now this time it's gonna be minus 2Q and the plus 2Q will be here. I will also indicate, so for both, now for both dipoles, I will make S to be, let's say 1.0 times 10 to minus two meters. And now I will also indicate this is, so this is the origin. I will also indicate here, that's S, and that is also S. So the two dipoles differ in the charges that they have, but they have the same separation between the two charges. And now I will also indicate that from here, Okay, from the center of this dipole to here, that, let's make that, one point oh meters. And let's say from here to here, to the center of this dipole. So this distance is, let's say 1.2 meters. So it is a different distance. Now, what I want to do is calculate. Okay, so my goal is to find E net at the origin. Okay, so that's what I want to find. Now I, I can see that I have two dipoles near, so E net will be really the sum of the electric field, let's call this dipole one. Okay, dipole one, and this one is dipole two. So it will be the electric field that dipole one creates at the location of the origin plus the electric field that dipole two creates at the location of the origin. So in order to find E net, I need to find those two. And I'll do, I'll do this one at a time. First, I will look at dipole one. Uh, I see that this is the orientation of the dipole and this is the dipole axis for dipole one. So my observation location, which is location O, is on the dipole axis. So what I need to do, I can find the magnitude of the electric field that dipole one creates at the observation location by using this expression, one over four pi epsilon naught two times the magnitude of the dipole moment over r cubed. Now this is going to be nine times 10 to the nine for the constant. And then I have a factor of two. Uh, the dipole moment P is equal to Q times S. For dipole one, I have only one charge. So it's gonna be just 1.6 times 10 to minus 19, and then S is simply 10 to minus two, divided by 
the distance cubed. Now for dipole 1, from the center of dipole 1 to the observation location, it is 1 meter. So I will do 1.0 cubed. Now I did 9 times 2 times 1.6 gave me roughly 29 with two significant figures. And then I have 10 to 9 times 10 to minus 19. So from those two I get 10 to minus 10. 10 to minus 12 due to this. And then 10 to minus 15 due to the fact that I have a 3 in the denominator. And this will be Newton's per coulomb. Now this this number will only tell me the magnitude the strength of the electric field that dipole one creates at the observation location i also need to figure out the direction let's do i'll do a figure right here plus q minus q and the observation location is somewhere here now at the observation location, I have two contributions to the electric field. One from the positive charge that points away and one electric field contribution here from the negative charge that points towards the negative charge. Now, because this one is closer to the observation location than the positive charge, this electric field arrow will be longer than that. So. So the electric field here due to the dipole will point upwards, okay? So that's the electric field due to the dipole at that location. And for me, that means that the electric field at O from dipole one will point upwards. I have the direction now and I also have the magnitude. I can write this as a vector from dipole one to the observation location. If I choose this to be X and that to be Y and Z goes out of the page towards me, then this will be essentially the positive Y. So zero plus 29 times 10 to minus 15 comma 0 nano, uh, newtons per coulomb. So I found one, the one from the dipole, from dipole one to the observation location. And I will do the same thing for the other one. Now for dipole two, um, this is the orientation of the dipole and the observation location is also on the dipole axis. So it's the same expression. So the strength of the electric field that dipole 2 creates at the observation location is exactly the same equation. 2P, we just need to be careful with the charges and the distances because those will different. Um, it, it will be different even though it's the same equation. Now this is, the constant is 9 times 10 to the 9. I have the factor of 2. Now the charge is 2Q, where Q is 1.6. So I have 2 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. The separation S is the same. So it will be 10 to minus 2. And then divided by the distance. The distance now is 1.2 meters cubed. Okay, remember... <coughs> Remember that this two over here is included here. This two is from this equation. And I just realized that here, I took this to be as 10 to the power of three, but it is not. So I need to correct. This is 10 to minus uh, let's see, so minus 10, minus 2, so I will be minus 12, not minus 15. That's simply, simply 1. Now going back to this, 
this um, is 33 times 10 to minus 12 newtons per coulomb <clears throat> now if I follow uh, so this is the magnitude if I follow the same thing that I did before for a dipole that has the positive charge here and the negative charge there I know that the electric field at the observation location will point towards the negative charge and because this is slightly slightly bigger than 29 I will make this arrow a little bit longer and then this is E dipole 2 at the observation location now this direction is the negative y direction and I combining it with the number I can write my vector the electric field from dipole 2 at the observation location is going to be 0 minus 33 times 10 to minus 12 comma 0 newtons per coulomb now I have Okay, let's call this, all right, this is equation one, this is equation two, and this is equation three. Now I'm going to combine equations one, two, and three. So from equation one, equation two, and equation three, I get that E net at the observation location is 0 <coughs> minus 4 times 10 to minus 12 0 newtons per coulomb and what that tells me is that the net electric field points in the negative y direction so this will be E net at the observation location. The important things that uh, I want you to remember from this problem are the following. You do need to um, pay attention to how many dipoles, how many charges you have around your observation location because all of these are going to contribute to E net. Now if you have dipoles, for each dipole you have to decide if the observation location is on the dipole axis which was the case here for both of our dipoles or perpendicular to the dipole axis for example if I had placed the dipole here the observation location would be perpendicular to the dipole axis and then once you do the calculations do not forget you need to use your understanding about the directions of the electric fields to find the direction of the electric field from your dipole and once you do that you will need to combine the direction of the electric field arrow with the magnitude in order to write okay in order to write the vector the xyz coordinate the xyz components and then if you have more than one dipole do the same thing for the other one and then add everything together <coughs> to get your net electric field.